scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on course at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The Bible mandates that we only follow those who through faith and patience. There are many routes to obtaining the promises, but that in following men, verify that there is faith at work in their lives. Otherwise, you are taking a risk to follow men who through faith and patience. Can I tell you, when you are walking with God, there must be something captured within your walk with God that will demand that you trust him. Hmm. Number three, when it is the Lord's doing, what is the third litmus test? It must bless and bring glory to the believer now or eventually. Please write. It must bless and bring good to the believer. It must bless and bring good to the believer now. That means at the present or eventually. If it is the Lord's doing, when it is the Lord's doing, it must bless and bring good to the believer now or eventually how do i know that this is the lord's doing it must bless and bring good to the believer even if it does not happen in that instant jeremiah 29 11 says for i know the thoughts that i think towards you saith the lord they are thoughts of peace and not of evil one more time they are thoughts of peace and not of evil it says to bring you to an expected end matthew chapter 7 from verse 11 and 12 for sake of time the, the whole context starts from verse 7 but then we'll just read 11 and 12 it says if ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children how much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him is that in your bible verse 12 it says therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you you will also do unto them and so on and so forth so he's saying that if you as as men unregenerate with with the nature of evil you still have a sense of compassion to do good to your children how much more your heavenly father if it is the lord's doing even if it does not make sense now relax within that experience is your blessing and within that experience is good are we together Romans chapter 8 and verse 28 still on the third point very quickly Romans 8 and verse 28 and we know hallelujah they may not know but we know this is an advantage we have in the kingdom we know that how many things including what made you cry yesterday that within the economy of God he sustains the power to make all things work together now, I don't know how many of you cook well, but I know that this region cooks well. Am I right on that? Yeah. Come on, don't disappoint this. I, 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 I should have a plate of swallow for this compliment. Yeah. Hallelujah. But watch this. Anybody who cooks well knows that the ingredients that make the meal you enjoy have different tastes. Is that true? Yes, there are ingredients that you only enjoy them when combined. 
if you are to eat or taste them alone, it will annoy you. It is so pungent. And yet it is part of what makes that meal beautiful. Now, it is the expertise of the cook. You will leave it to the cook. He knows the quantity of combination. Are we together now? Yes. If, if you are cooking a pot of soup and the same quantity of vegetables become the same quantity of salt for you, you have done something only Satan can do. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. No wall you won't keep down, blind you won't see down, coming after me. No shadow you won't light up. So number one, that when it is the Lord's doing, it must be in accordance to the word of God and it must be consistent with the will of God. Number two, when it is the Lord's doing, it will require faith, it will require obedience on the part of the believer. You have that down? Number three, that when it is the Lord's doing, it must bless and bring good to the believer. Take note, now or eventually. That means if you have not seen the good manifest now, Mary, when the angel appeared, he never said you are a troubled woman. He said you are favored. But the next thing that followed Mary was a series of controversies and pain. And yet God still said you are favored. So sometimes favor does not start with laughter. Favor can start with endurance, but it is still favor. Favor can start with tears, but it is still favor. Favor can start with the most important thing. The Bible says better is the end. The end. Don't be too quick to say God is unfaithful. No. Only a boring movie starts with victory. Every movie that attracts your attention will demand that you keep watching. Hallelujah. Many great movies start with mysticism and tragedies. The entire span of the movie is to unravel secrets and mysteries. That is where the expectation and the joy of watching that movie is. Could that movie be your life? That for 30 years now, even you, you don't understand what God is acting. But rest in the fact that if it is the Lord's doing, at the end of it, you will sing a song that only you can sing. I hope you believe what you are hearing. Let me prophesy to someone. The same way you cry is with that same energy you will laugh. The same way they mocked you, that is the same way they will gather to celebrate God. Hallelujah. Let me show you what will happen to someone in this place. Job chapter 42 and verse 10. Please give it to us. The Bible says, And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job, how many? What he had before. Don't regret what you lost before. A greater is coming. Uh, listen, I know you lost a child sadly. But God will give you one child that is equal to a nation. Now, let's go to verse 11 of that scripture so that I tie this up tonight. Verse 11, Job 42. Watch what happened to him. The Bible says, Then came there unto him all his brethren. Where were they when he was alone with his wife? What grace suddenly came upon him that made everybody who forgot him to start remembering him. 
does that look like what will happen to you after this conference after this convention that those who have called you Ichabod they forgot about you they, they've drifted from you because of the pungency of all that has happened in your life that they will begin to come to you let's finish that scripture let's finish that scripture the Bible says all his brethren and all his sisters read with me if you can and all that had been of his acquaintances before and they did eat bread with him in the house and they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the Lord had brought upon him I like the second part it says and every man gave him a piece of money and every one an earring of gold how many of them including those who laughed before every man when the Lord's hand comes upon your life he can use anybody even Pharaoh to bless you hallelujah please be seated for the last point so we wrap up my God someone will not go back home the same are you ready for number four the fourth test how will I know that it is the Lord's doing it must bring glory to the name of the Lord in it the entire journey culminated by that result Jesus must be glorified Matthew 9 and verse 8 Matthew 9 and verse 8 the fourth litmus test that helps you know that this is the Lord's doing the Bible says but when the multitude saw it help me they marveled and glorified God which had given such power unto men when they saw the child that had come after 20 years when they saw the job that had come after 10 years when they saw the promotion when they saw the good things that came that after 10 years of waiting God gave you quadruplets the Bible says when they saw you see the way you know it is God is that the more men look at you the more they call his name when your name is the only name they call in the presence of your testimony someone else produced it if it is God's hand that is at work in your life the more men look at you they should nod and say this God this God not just your name this God hallelujah it must bring glory to the name of the Lord Galatians 1 24 is a scripture that has blessed me for many years let's read it together and please never forget it for the rest of your life because this is what your life is becoming after now it says one to read and they glorified God in me one more time one more time the last time now and they glorified God hallelujah these are the four scriptural tests to know that it is the Lord's doing can I recap one last time and then we'll pray when it is the Lord's doing the results that the manifestations in your life must be in accordance to the Word of God and must be consistent with the will of God number two it must require faith on the part of the believer for that result to be made manifest number three it must bless and bring good to the believer now or eventually do not forget point three so that you can still rejoice in the midst of storms it did not happen today but it did not mean it will not happen God is still walking give him time hallelujah and then number four when all is said and done when the children come 
when the prosperity comes, when the ministry increase comes, when the influence comes, never forget. It says, let it not be that when you have built houses and you have done this, that you say, my power and the might of my hand has given me this, but thou shalt remember. Meaning in the presence of plenty, men can forget. In the presence of results, men can forget. Pain can make you remember God, but plenty can erode the memory of his faithfulness from your life. The Bible is full of men and women who forgot God and in their pride exalted and puffed up with pride they forgot God until they came down to their lowly estates again. Never forget the fourth and the final test. If it is the Lord's doing, it must bring glory to the name of the Lord. If it is the Lord's doing, it must bring glory to the name of the Lord. John 17 and verse 1, Jesus lifted up his eyes to the heaven praying and he said father the hour has come glorify thy son that thy son may glorify thee glorify thy son glorify the businessman that he may bring you glory glorify the young lady that she may bring you glory glorify Esther that she may bring you glory glorify Ruth that she may bring you glory glorify Gideon that he may bring you glory glorify Samson glorify Joshua Selman I will not call your name for you glorify Joshua Selman that he may bring you glory glorify that preacher that apostle glorify this faithful church member glorify this usher that he may bring you glory can i tell you this please listen to me one of the reasons why many people do not see the manifestation of the hand of god upon their lives is because they are not determined to give him glory in the midst of their lifting it is easy to want to stand and be the epicenter, the point of attraction. But you see, the strategy of the kingdom is that you attract God's hand and God's might. You want your life to be a marvel and a wonder first to you and then to the nations. You must be doggedly committed to see that intentionally he is glorified in the midst of any and everything. That may mean clapping, that may mean jumping, that may mean rolling, that may mean calling men to come and say, see what God has done. Whatever it takes, make sure that men are not confused as to who is the doer. I remind you one last time, dear people of God, there are things men can do. There are things only Satan can do. But in your life and in this season, and as touching this convention, in the name of Jesus, many of you have seen what men can do. You don't need a repetition of that. Many of you have experienced painfully so what Satan can do. You don't need a repetition of that. But in the name of Jesus, someone is about to taste and see that the Lord is good. Someone is about to taste and see that the Lord is good taste and see that the Lord is good in one minute wherever you are open your mouth and begin to cry unto God visit my life oh God and do what only you can do are there people of prayer in this church go ahead and pray visit my family call the name of your children mention the name of your business Mention the name of your ministry as a man of God. I cry to you, the exalted one, do what only you can do. I have seen what men can do. I have seen what Satan can do. But I want to say this is the Lord's doing. Make it marvelous in my eyes. Make it marvelous in my sight. Pray. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Is someone praying? Sheba kata parakato safraskes, kelantes kapakato safraskadesh. Father, 
Father, let your hand come upon my ministry. Someone is praying. Father, let your hand come upon my business. Let your hand come upon my endeavors. Let this yoke of delay, let this yoke of pain, let this affliction of darkness, this mockery and shame, that statement, Ichabod, let it be taken, rolled away from my life. One more minute, you are praying. One more minute, you are praying. There is a preacher listening to me. It's time for men to see the hand of God upon your life and your ministry. It's time to contend that your calling and your election become sure. Esther, don't be quiet. It's time for God to take you to your palace. Ruth, don't be quiet. It's time for Boaz to see you. Gideon, do not be quiet. It's time for the mantle of a warrior to rest upon you. Joseph, don't be quiet. It's time for the gates of the prison to be opened. For in Jesus, much less name we have prayed. For in Jesus, much less name we have prayed. Do you believe in the power of prophetic declarations? The power of God is resting now in this place. I want to speak over your life. Just give me the next one minute. That everything that does not name the name of Christ. Pela shali karu skaberiata. Embra talakapara sabere sopraskatia. Every door that has been closed over you In the name of Jesus the son of the living God Please hear me I command that door to be opened now To be opened now To be opened now To be opened now To be opened now, be open now. Hallelujah Listen there are three ways to open doors. Number one is by using the right key. Number two is by knocking. But that would depend on whether the person inside wants to open for you. But the way to open doors when you are angry is to learn from Paul and Silas. It says at midnight, they prayed and they sang and all the jailers heard them. Suddenly there was an earthquake. It rattled the foundations and the Bible says and all doors open how many doors all doors open let me speak to someone because some doors have opened but others have refused to open every door that is left yet to be opened no matter how long it has been closed I decree and declare a fata be open a fata be open a fata be open. A fata be open. We're wrapping up. Hmm. Once upon a time, the nation of Israel were standing before the Red Sea, and behind them were the Egyptians at the command of Pharaoh with anger coming to take them back into yesterday and the bible says the lord told moses why do you cry before me he says speak to the people that they go forward i want to speak to someone you don't just go forward because you want to you are pushed by prophecy i stand as a prophetic midwife upon the grace in this house and for someone who has been crawling I push you into the next level of your life. I push a pariketesketa 
I push you step into the next level of ministry the next level of your destiny by God who helps men in the name of Jesus Christ you see today in the name of Jesus the rider upon the white horse the one by whom a sword comes from his mouth every Egyptian that has mocked God please hear me in the name that is above all names you see them no more forever you see them no more forever you see them no more forever, you see them no more forever. Finally, can I declare restoration? Please watch this. My apologies for stretching by a few minutes beyond my allotted time. I want you to listen carefully. Just help those under the anointing. But listen to me. You know what it means to restore? There is a difference between progress and restoration. Watch me. This is progress. Taking incremental steps. All right? Restoration is when an obstacle inhibits your progress so that there is a lag in time. The things you should have done, you cannot do because of that obstacle. Now watch this. If the obstacle is taken away, it is called deliverance. But what happens afterwards is not restoration. It is still called progress. Restoration means to be taken by the hand of the Spirit to the point you would have been if that obstacle were not there. Are we together now? I'm not speaking progress tonight. I want to speak restoration. Because there are people who, if not because this family altar tied you down, by now, there are things that would have happened to you. If not because of the wickedness and the biases of men, you would have been lifted in that office by now. The Bible says they are taken for a prey and none say it restore. I decree and declare between now and the end of August by the God who has called me between Apareke Tebata now and the end of August everything that should have been in your life that is not in your life I gravitate it towards your destiny every relationship that should not have left your life but has gone I call it back in Jesus name I call back opportunities by the Spirit of the Living God and hear me even if you are Samson I command that hair to grow back listen for someone before you arrive home this night your testimony will reach your house before you did you hear what I said? Your testimony will reach your house before you. Wave your hands to Jesus as a sign of thanksgiving and as a sign of faith. You are also waving trouble goodbye. You are saying goodbye once and for all and it must wave you back. You are waving shame and reproach goodbye by the lifting up of your hands to the God who lifts men to the God who helps men indeed this is the Lord's doing hallelujah hallelujah now please lend me your attention for one more minute no moving around please you are in this place I want to give two sets of people an opportunity to make it right with Jesus tonight it is impossible that you have a gathering like this without men and women who are being convicted of the spirit to make it right with Jesus. If it is the Lord's doing, remember, I said it must be according to his word and it must be consistent with his will. 
and the Bible says it is the desire of the Lord that all men be saved and that they come into the knowledge of the truth. There must be someone in this place on ground here and those following by way of internet, television, or perhaps by way of a rebroadcast. The Lord is calling you to make it right here at this um, convention. I want to give you an opportunity to make it right with Jesus. Or number two, there are those who are saying, Apostle, if you will give me a chance, I remember making this decision, but sincerely, I cannot say that my life, I'm working consistent with the ways of God. I have deviated for whatever reason. Like the prodigal son, you see, coming to yourself is your responsibility. The prodigal son went away, spent his money on riotous living, but when he came to himself, the Bible says, he said, how many hired servants as my father and I'm here feeding with the swine? He said, I will arise and I will go to my father and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son, but take me as one of your slaves. Watch this. The father never came and met him in his rot and he did not have to go home to meet his father. They met somewhere at the point of his obedience. Hallelujah. He got up and the moment he started taking a step towards his father, his father been coming to church, you were born by and from a Christian family, you've been around the things of God, that does not equal salvation. Proximity to the things of God does not equal salvation. The Bible says there is no other name under heaven given unto men by which we must be saved. He said, this is the record that God hath given us eternal life and that that life is in his son. It is only he that hath the son that had life, not he that had church, not he that had a pastor, as important as that is. I want to count one to five, and I want someone who is bold and sincere, serious and determined to end it once and for all with Satan. You are saying, Apostle, if you give me a chance, I want to make it right and I'm not ashamed. As I count one to five from the fathers of the aisles, I want you to make your way and come and stand right in front of me here and I want to pray with you. I'll begin my counting now. Don't wait for someone to be the first. Be bold, be strong. One. Let's celebrate them as they come. Two. If you're running, run to Jesus. Run to him. Three. Oh, the overwhelming never ending please stand for space you don't have to kneel stand come come to jesus Thank you very much, my dear brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for this bold decision. The Bible declares that as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. It is a noble decision, the wisest decision known to man in this side of God's kingdom to make your ways right, to have peace with God and to receive peace from him. Whether you are dedicating your heart, your life to Jesus or making it a sign of surrender, and please say this after me. Say it loud and clear. You are speaking to Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I love you with all my heart. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my savior as my lord and as my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i am a child of god i go forward ever and backward never Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious ones. 
by the authority of scripture I declare your sins forgiven I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God the grace to live the victorious Christian life I release upon you right now and based on the authority of scripture and your declaration the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over your life you walk in newness of life from now in Jesus much less name I pray now please all of you just remain where you are I see that there are a number of um, counselors and officials who will be handing over a card please do well to have the card make sure you pick it and then fill it legibly as demanded um, with your correct details and from there you'll be guided on what to do whether to go back to your seat or to move somewhere where you'll be counseled further but thank you very much for making this great decision hallelujah now let me just lend my voice respectfully to encourage everyone um, to be part of tomorrow's session I'm going to be speaking over your life and then I'm going to be praying for the sick in the morning hallelujah so make sure that you make whatever sacrifice as much as you can make and invite everyone if there is no space if they have to sit on the roof it's better to sit on the roof and be healed and be blessed hallelujah so you have the responsibility to do the work of an evangelist let everybody know that God is moving here in this assembly in this church for now may the Lord bless you in Jesus mighty name amen and amen Tomorrow, tomorrow morning, we're going to be here by 7 a.m. The service is going to be 7 a.m. 7 a.m. If you are late, you will meet the grace. So make sure you are here at 7 a.m. I want us to celebrate God's servant tonight. Apostle Joshua Selma. How many of us know that it is the angel of God that God sent to us. I believe that all of us have been blessed. Can we say, dear apostle, we love you. Amen. Those of us who have given our lives to Christ, be here tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. We have a meeting with you just immediately after the morning session. I raise my hand to heaven and I say and I declare the expectation the Bible Hello Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs It says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee As you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you